Who here has seen a Jeremy Lin highlight? Who here has heard the name Jeremy Lin? <laughs> Uh, so when, when Sanity swept the nation on February 14th, it was Valentine's Day, and Jeremy Lin hit a three-point shot at the end of the game. Uh, and what had sort of been gaining traction as this sort of interesting trend in basketball and sports world exploded across the globe. So I called my author on, on that evening and said, I think you should do an e-book on Jeremy Lin. And uh, he said, well, it'll take me a little while. And I said, well, we don't really have a little while. Uh, we need to do this really quickly. And he agreed. Uh, and, so, uh, and he went and he did research for 72 hours. So he didn't sleep for 72 hours to have verification of this from his wife, who was really glad that Valentine's Day happened before I made the call. <laughs> and he wrote this ebook in 72 hours. Uh, and he gave it to me on a Friday. Uh, and we built the ebook with one of our technology partners' book. And we had it out the door, ready for sale on Monday morning. So it was roughly six days from the ideation to the incarnation in the marketplace. Um, we sold it for $1.99 across all platforms. We were uh, agnostic. Anybody could buy it wherever they wanted to buy it. And we even sold it direct. We experimented with um, a direct selling mechanism called Gangxi, G-A-N-X-Y. Um, we built a Facebook app for it, and we put it on the author's website so that anybody liking him on Facebook could just buy the ebook directly off the Facebook site on any of the platforms they wanted, Amazon being there or whatnot. Didn't have to go anywhere else. It's right there for them. Um, and the author, of course, paid a little bit of money for selling it through. So let me tell you what worked about this and what didn't. What worked about it was everybody thought it was really cool. <laughs> There's real value in that. I'm, I'm serious. There is value in that now maybe more than ever uh, because the experimental nature of digital is something that traditional publishing doesn't quite understand. The traditional publishing puts a lot of risk and a lot of time and a lot of effort into this physical container that is sized just so and weighted just so and bound just so, so it'll fit just so on a physical shelf. And it takes a long time to get from that end of the value chain to that end of the value chain. And a lot of time. And so you can't experiment with a book. You don't fling it out there and go, well, I hope that works after eight or 12 months of working on it. I know some authors feel like that's what their publishers did, but that is not what they did. <laughs> that's not experimentation. It was, they had a strategy, it just might not have worked. In digital, it's very different. In digital, we, we favor what's called an iterative action, where we do something, if it doesn't work, we just fine tune it and do it a little bit better. If it doesn't work that time, we just pull it back and we do it again. It's what software developers do when they just put, roll out new software. Every time you open Mozilla Firefox, you've got a new iteration, right? You have to, you have to download the new version like every other day. That's iterative, right? Something wasn't quite right, something wasn't perfect, so we do it again. In digital, you have the liberty to do this, whereas in print, you never did. Now's the time. Now's the time to experiment, where you still have this space, where digital is small enough, where you can try and fail without much consequence. But if you try and succeed, there could be great results, such as with the Jeremy Lin ebook. So one thing that, that didn't work so well with this was the direct sales. It's a great idea uh, to use this platform, Gangsy, discrete landing page. You know, so you, you can click on this, you, you Google it, you get it, you click you, right on the landing page where you can buy on any platform. So if you're just Googling Jeremy Lin, you can find it and buy directly. Good idea. Facebook app, really good idea. Widget on the author's website, really good idea. Only works <coughs> if you've already captured a lot of traffic, right? If you've already got thousands and tens of thousands of people coming across your website, coming across your Facebook page every day then they might click and buy. Really hard to do direct sales when you don't already have the traffic, right? So we're learning something here. So our next iteration, we will probably only use direct sales when we've already done the pre-work to get the traffic, right? One thing that worked okay in this scenario was the ebook sales in the US market. Uh, so we got this book out in six days. We got tons of press for it, including the CNN clip that Eve mentioned earlier. So a lot of people knew about it. A lot of people were going to, to Amazon. We were getting some reviews who so we were rising up the rankings. And we sold several thousand of these ebooks. For a buck ninety-nine, my author's making about fifty cents a book after accounts and after distributors, etc. So you're gonna have to sell a lot of books to make any money at that, right? But it worked okay. It was definitely worth the 72 hours time, right? He's gonna make a little bit of money on it, made some noise, very good. One thing that worked really well was because we basically owned the Jeremy Lin ebook space for a period of a couple of weeks. We ended up selling the rights to that tiny little ebook in half a dozen Asian territories. And those right sales netted more for my author than he made all of last year. We didn't know that would happen. We only knew because we experimented. We only knew because we gave it a shot. And if we had planned early in that, 
while he's sitting there with LexisNexis and, and writing this Jeremy Lin ebook, if I were sitting at my desk and making my evil plans to conquer the world, I would not probably have anticipated mid five figure money coming in from Asia for a tiny little ebook that he would write. I wouldn't have pitched it to him like that. I wouldn't have made that claim on any press sheet. We only discovered it because we did it, which is the foundational virtue of experimentation that you only find out what's possible by trying something. So this week we have another ebook coming out, a uh, short one uh, called Murder's Most Foul, The School Shooters in Our Midst. And it's done by an excellent journalist uh, who's going back and looking at the history of school shootings in America and cataloging them and sort of trying to pull from them something. What can we learn? How can we predict better? How can we know the signs other than Facebook postings that seem threatening? How can we make better decisions that will come out at the end of the week? At the end of the month, right before opening day of Major League Baseball season, we're doing a series of Major League team primers. Uh, so if you're a Boston Red Sox fan, or New York Mets fan, or Yankees fan, or San, uh, San Francisco Giants fan, you can buy a, a short ebook that's been done by one of the biggest blogs in that city. <coughs> about all the players, about their off-season, about their projections for success, about the games they'll play and what, who they think will win, small articles about strategy or history or the new uniforms or whatever it is that would interest you. We're going to continue to experiment and along the way we're going to find some things that fail. We're going to do the gangsy thing, the direct sales thing, we're going to do that again with the, with the baseball blogs because those blogs already have between 20 and 100,000 people visiting them every day. I think we can sell a lot of ebooks through those blogs in a way that we weren't able to sell the Jeremy Lin ebook through the unique Facebook. Uh, for Murders Most Foul, we're doing a more highbrow approach. We're not selling any direct sales. We're going directly to universities and to academics and to those who study these matters, social scientists. Um, and we're encouraging them to encourage their students to buy a couple dollar article, long form article, on the history of school sheets. Different strategies for different books. Different experiments for different books. And this is only in one small category of the ebook, of the tiny ebook, right? 15,000 words, what most of these are. This is only one little category, and we're finding all these new ways to experiment. Imagine what we would do if we opened up the idea of experimentation to everything we did, to the hardcover that comes out from Random House. What if we built a wildly experimental strategy around that? And we didn't just rely on reviews, and we didn't just rely on early blurbs, and we didn't just rely on pre publicity press, but, uh, pre publication press, but we. We were experimental in that space, as experimental as we were when we're coming up with the Jeremy Lin book in the middle of the night. I want to plant this seed because I want to feel, I want you to feel like this is opportunity time. And that the, although there is something to be said, and I would advocate for it when you're working on your big book, there's something to be said for patience and thoughtfulness. And that you should not rush forward and self-publish your book on Amazon just because you can. But there is something also to be said for the idea of starting small, experimenting iteratively. If you've got a big novel, you want to get a big publisher, give yourself a year to do some wild experiments on the web. Find a friend, find a mentor, find somebody who's done it already and done it well. Consult with them, pay them a little money, bring them in to help you fine tune your strategy. Release a small ebook. Start a social media campaign. Maybe sell some stuff direct on your blog. What's the worst that could happen? You could not sell anything, which is what most of us do most of the day. <laughs> it's not selling anything. The risk is limited. The upside could be huge. But more than anything, the experience you gain from that experimentation will better you for when your big opportunity comes along. Eric Ries uh, has written an amazing book called The Lean Startup, uh, and he travels all over the country and he talks about um, equipping companies large and small to think through this process of experimentation and failure. But one of the things that he brings up early in his book, which is echoed by every single person you've ever talked to who's ever worked in a startup, from Silicon Valley to Boston and everywhere in between, and that is that the way you measure the success of a startup, and I would warrant that you are your own startup, you are getting something off the ground, you're starting from a standing stop and trying to get some momentum and trying to get something going with probably very little resources. You're a startup. The way that every startup measures its success is not in how much money it made, but in how much it learned from its failure. 
And this is true across the board. The wildest success that come out of Silicon Valley, the biggest companies that you know, from Yahoo to eBay to Oracle and beyond, the people who built those built them because they had gone through the fire of failure and sometimes even the fire of modest success. And they had learned, and they had tweaked, and they had shifted, and they had become more expert with every failure, so that when the time came for success, they had all the tools they needed. My role as an agent, and I think the role of the agent in the life of every author, is to prompt the right kind of experimentation. In the digital space, everything seems possible, and sometimes everything actually is possible. It's kind of magic, the things that you can do on the web, the things that you can do on tablets and devices. It's amazing. Everything seems like it's possible. And for you, the author, who's looking out into this open landscape of possibility, the biggest question you have to ask yourself is, which opportunities? Which things do I do? Where do I spend my time and my money and my mental resources? The agent's job is to direct you well. And the agent can only do that if they themselves are experimenting enough to know how to counsel you. I often think that the role of the agent in the digital space is really just to manage the possible. To limit the possible. To the most wise. <laughs> <laughs>